Hello and welcome to Good Game Well Played for this week. My name is Hingers and this is Season 2, Episode 3 of the ABC's only show about competitive video games and the nerds who play them. Today on the show, we unpack all the ongoing drama from the Shanghai Major, but first, let's take a look at the news. The first Capcom Pro Tour event of 2016 was held in France this week at the Cannes Winter Clash. The Street Fighter V tournament was the first to award Capcom Pro Tour points for 2016, and the final saw French local Mr. Crimson's Laura, a new character in Street Fighter V, take on Phenom out of Norway's M. Bison. Mr. Crimson, the crowd favourite, took an early lead in the series, going up 2-0, finishing the second game with a flashy super combo. Phenom fought back to take the third game, but the Frenchman proved too strong, taking the fourth match and the series 3-1. Class 2016 champion! Anyway, Mr. Crimson has now qualified for the Capcom Pro Tour European Final. The Capcom Pro Tour events will be in Australia for the first time in May and August of this year. Staying with fighting games, and music slash tech festival South by Southwest has announced they are dropping $25,000 US on a Smash tournament. The Battle of the Five Gods, as it has been dubbed, will host 20 of the world's top Smash players for Super Smash Bros. Melee on GameCube. The titular Five Gods are PPMD, Mango, Hungrybox, Mewtwo King and Amada, and have all been confirmed for the tournament. There are 20 players coming for the tournament, but they're calling it just the Battle of the Five Gods. There's all these other guys, like there's other 15 guys just hanging around being like, what are we, you know? Maybe a more accurate title would be the Battle of the Five Gods and also the Battle of the 15 underappreciated pros who have worked really hard to get to where they are. Hmm? Hmm? Think of that? Hmm? And in CSGO news, Valve has quadrupled the size of the prize money at specific CSGO majors from $250,000 to $1 million starting with MLG Columbus at the end of this month. Valve sponsors four CSGO majors a year with increased prize pools and has been under pressure to up the ante for the tournaments as CSGO has found itself in the shadow of other esports games who have been offering bigger prize pools. Moving to Heroes of the Storm news, the grand final of Season 1 of the ANZ League was held this week with Negative Synergy taking on Fresh for a sweet $8,000 US first place prize. Negative Synergy dominated the best of five series, taking it 3-1 on Cursed Hollow. They will go on to represent ANZ in the Spring Championship in Korea later this year. And in diversity in esports news, that's a type of news, right? Intel and ESL have teamed up to support and launch AnyKey, an organization, quote, dedicated to supporting diverse participation in esports. Currently, the organization says they are focusing on the role of women in esports as an underrepresented group. And ESL have announced the eight teams to participate in the 2016 Intel Challenge at IEM Katowice this weekend with a $30,000 prize pool. IEM Katowice kicks off this weekend and will host CSGO, League of Legends and StarCraft events. All right, that is it for the news. Let's go to Shanghai. By now, I'm sure you're all across the firing of James Sir Toogood Harding, one of the English language hosts at the Dota 2 Shanghai Major. In case you're not though, here is a very quick primer. Basically, the Shanghai Major was plagued with technical difficulties and viewers were rightly quite unhappy. Meanwhile, to compound this, James, who kind of has a history of drama with Valve, had been hired to host parts of the Shanghai Major and was being his general cheeky, that is, obnoxious self. And admittedly, that's something a lot of viewers are into. However, others were not, specifically the higher-ups at Valve, and more specifically, Gabe Newell, who got James's best friend and Valve employee, Bruno, to pull him aside during the broadcast on day two and tell him he'd been fired. James tweeted about getting fired, but there was no official word from Valve about what had happened. Then, hours later, Harvard dropout, Valve MD, and two-time billionaire Gaben took to Reddit to say, we've had issues with James at previous events. Some Valve people lobbied to bring him back for Shanghai, feeling that he deserved another chance. That was a mistake. James is an ass, and we won't be working with him again. The next day, Harding responded with a 17-page statement entitled, James is an ass, which was posted on Google Docs and linked to on Reddit and Twitter. It is a full-on read. It's the kind of 7,000-word stream of consciousness screed that is all too rare now that live journal is a thing of the past and emo is no longer a commercially viable genre of music. In this manifesto, he talks a lot about his struggle to get properly paid from Valve for hosting and casting gigs, and goes into details about his various run-ins with Valve staff in the past, including his struggles hosting TI4, and also, he talks about how much money he spent on his clothes. $2,000. He also posts excerpts from various chat logs with people like Icefrog and Bruno in the lead-up to the Shanghai Major. There's obviously a lot in there, and I encourage you to go and read it if you're one of the seven people who hasn't done so already, because it is a doozy! 
Anyway, the criticism from the internet has fallen into two broad camps. Generally speaking, people tend to be either pro-Gabe or pro-James. Me, I think there are very few heroes in this story. Maybe none, but let's take a closer look. Gabe's basic criticism of James is that James is an ass, and there is some evidence for this. Uh, normally, you know, I have like a pre-hosting ritual um, winter. I mean, you can probably appreciate this. Um, so last night, you know, I was perusing the uh, hotel entertainment and, um, you know, actually, you know, for the ritual to get ready for today. And um, it turned out, you know, censorship, the uh, Chinese hotel disab had disabled pornography. So it was very hard to kind of get ready for the show. <laughs> um, I mean, uh. I mean, don't get me wrong. I watched it. Mr. Wang's amazing <laughs> wheelchair antics were pretty amazing. Um, a real thriller. And I did manage to finish. And I, you know, I'm here for the show today now. There is a lot going on in that joke. And this is right at the start of the broadcast. Too Good just drops in some sweet gear about pornography and masturbation, and there's a pun on the word disabled, and there's a guy called Mr. Wang, I guess, because China? Look, it's a busy 30 seconds, and yeah, it's a joke, but you've also got to understand the context of where he is. The Chinese government is super strict about obscenity and pornography. And you know, personally, I'm not offended by someone referencing pornography in a Dota broadcast, but like, at the same time, I tune in to watch Dota. And instead of watching Dota, this is all about you and your precast wanking ritual. If I wanted to hear irrelevant jokes about masturbation, apropos of nothing, I'd just go to like any open mic comedy night any night of the week. I'm tuning into the Shanghai Major to watch Dota and get analysis and commentary from people who are much smarter than me. But instead, all that gets put on hold because you want to talk about your penis. To my mind, it isn't even that the things he said were offensive or un-PC or whatever. It's that they were all about him and him proving that he was too cool. When he says he doesn't know or care about the game, it might be funny in the moment, but it doesn't make me want to keep watching. And look, he's a super popular caster, so maybe I'm in the minority. But I watch esports because I want to see cool people do cool shit. At the same time, let's remember, there are very few here is in this story. Maybe not. What kind of billionaire managing director goes on Reddit just to call someone an ass? Don't you have a company you're managing and directing? Hey, Mr. Newell, we need this. Don't talk to me now. I've got a shit post on Reddit. And that's part of his charm, right? He's a straight talking hero and he's gay. But when your company is said to a guy you just fired not to release a statement and to put it on ice, for you to then go on Reddit and call a guy an ass is super unprofessional and definitively ironic given that you just fired the guy for being super unprofessional. Anyway, people have been quick to stake out what they think this means for the future of esports. The general narrative is that as this thing we love gets more professional, we lose the community aspect that we feel a part of. And to some extent, that's like in-jokes and memes and drama, but the rest of it is like losing the wild west of broadcasting that internet content has been for the last 10 years, where you can sort of say whatever offensive or edgy thing you want. And people point to traditional sports coverage and say, we don't want to be ESPN. We don't want to be traditional sports because we are esports and we're a fundamentally different thing. I don't agree with that. I'm tuning in to watch the best players in the world compete and to learn more about a game. And that's the same whether it's StarCraft or Dota or Cricket or Rugby, if I ever watch Rugby, but I don't watch Rugby because I'm not your dad. Have you ever watched a sports broadcast? These are some loose units we have commentating, right? I remember one time when I was a kid, I was watching the Cricket and like for some reason the camera showed a wedding reception in the background and it was between a white guy and an Asian lady. And the commentator, Tony Gregg, was like, he just straight up called the Asian lady a male or a bride. And everyone in the commentary room was like, bah, that's so funny, ha! Huh? Shut up. My point is, even if esports becomes like regular sports, it's not like you're gonna lose your edgy jokes if that's what's so important to you. Actually, yeah, you know what? I don't want esports coverage to be like traditional sports coverage because we should be better than traditional sports. They're often commentated by like these old, out of touch dudes who don't know any better. Anyway, as we wrap up, I'd like to leave you with some parting words of wisdom from Sir Too Good himself. We all know I'm done for after this event anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he spent $2,000 on those clothes. What up, bro? We'll report on the playoffs and the rest of the Shanghai Majors next week. Anyway, that is it for this ep of Well Played. Let us know what you think of the Valve, the Sir Too Good saga, and where you think esports coverage is heading in the future. Hit us up on social media, Good Game on Facebook, or at Good Game TV on Twitter. Or as always, you can try and guess my Steam username. Until next week, hang us out. See ya!